Are we live? <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today at the BMO Festival. Festival. <laughs> um, my name is Aisha Willaby, and I am going to moderate this panel today on mentorship for leadership skills. I am a tech content marketer with six years of experience helping businesses of various sizes across multiple different industries to build content strategies that take product, turn products into profit and take services and turn them into sales. Um, alongside me, I have an awesome panel that we're going to be having a really lovely, hopefully lovely discussion today. So just going to pass the mic and let everyone introduce themselves. Over to you, James. All right. Hey, I'm James. I'm a UX designer uh, who loves making tech better for humans. Um, during the day, I focus on design systems and accessibility at PayPal. And after hours, I'm a parent, a DIY builder, gearhead, and of course, uh, ADP list mentor. So excited to be here. Thanks. Thank you. Jared, you're up. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name's Jared. I'm the director of product design at Fly Homes. And I've been in technology since 2009, so about 13 years now, the six of those years leading creative teams. I started my career as a software engineer and transitioned into design. And I have experience working at like all different sizes of companies, big companies, small companies. Um, Worked at a big company called Expedia and helped uh, build like scalable product there and then helped some small companies grow and go public like Redfin. And I'm super passionate about growth, like for companies, of course, but for myself as well and other people, which has led me to uh, become a professionally certified coach and uh, like a pretty prolific mentor. I, I think I have over 15,000 mentorship minutes on ADP list alone. And then I do mentorship outside of ADP list as well. So a lot of talking, a lot of mentoring, but I love it. So nice to meet everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Jared. Really excited for the chat today. Over to you, Rose. Yeah, hello. Um, Jared, I didn't know you had that many mi minutes. That's amazing. Um, so my name is Rose Ivrillo. I am a, the UX research manager at a company called Cloudbeds, which is a hospitality tech for properties of all sizes across the world. Um, I was lucky enough to start the UX research program at Cloudbeds about a year ago, um, and I now have one amazing researcher working for me, and we are hoping to grow the team soon. Um, I also have been doing mentoring for a couple of years, um, almost as soon as I got into the industry myself, because I really relied on that to, I, I had a really great mentor when I first started out, and so I've been trying to pay that back ever since. Um, so I mentor on ADP list, um, and you can find me there or I also mentor um, kind of ad hoc with, with people I've met uh, in my time in the Boston UX community. I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Perfect, thank you, Rose. And last but not the least, Jason, over to you. Hi there, my name's Jason Silver and I'm a staff product designer at ServiceNow. And uh, I've been in the industry far too long uh, kind of embarrassing somewhere around 20 something years and we've been mentoring on ADP list uh, nearly since the beginning. I think I'm coming up on 2,500 minutes, which is a pretty nice milestone. And uh, when I'm not either mentoring or working, I'm a parent of two wonderful kids and I live in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area in Sunnyvale. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thanks all for the lovely intros. I mean, everyone on this panel session are like incredible professionals with lots of experience in your space doing what you do best. So I think the very first question, honestly, is to understand why you started mentoring. I know a, lot, a couple of you have shared kind of like little bits here and there on how you actually, you know, started this and why you're here. But 
I think the audience will benefit more from just understanding what that experience looks like for you, why you started mentoring, and just a bit on your journey so far with mentorship. Um, I'm going to be nominating the first speaker. I love this bit because I feel you know very powerful here. But um, I think Rose, I'd love for you to go first if you could tell us a bit on why you started mentoring. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as I mentioned in my intro, um, I was very lucky to meet the right person at the right time um, here in Boston, who was an alumni of my uh, university in the UX space. Um, and he asked me to help out with a conference that he was running, um, so the UXP Boston Conference. And from there, I just met the most amazing people. The UX community really is the best community, and people are so willing to give back and give of their time to people trying to break into the space, which is why we're all here, of course. Um, so receiving that mentoring, I was a self-taught researcher. I came into a company where I was, you know, I had no real experience. I kind of had to learn on the fly and learned as I go, um, as I went. So having that mentorship was really, really, really impactful and important for me. And so being able to give back um, has been really amazing as an experience. Um, and I think I've also been able to turn around and learn from my mentees as well. So they'll, they'll say things, they'll, they think of things differently. Um, and I think we'll get more into this as we go on, but that's been beneficial for me as well so that I can, I can take that, um, those learnings and those conversations and apply them to my own work as well so that they're thinking about things differently so that I can kind of reassess how I do my own my own research and my own leadership um, at Cloudbeds. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. And I honestly can relate a lot. I think the giving back bit is a story that I've heard from many people. It's one it's a sentiment I also share, you know, being a mentor myself. So absolutely lovely story there. Thank you, Rose. Thank um, you. Up. Want to know? why you started mentoring did you say my name i didn't quite hear you jared yes, yes I did okay jared. i think the initial motivation was similar to to rose i had you know people early in my career pour into me invest into me when maybe i didn't quite deserve it on paper or i wasn't quite ready for the responsibility but they had some faith or belief in me and um you know you want to you want to give back when people do that to you and, and i think mentorship is a way of giving back to the community. And uh, I think that's probably my initial motivation. And then I would say like over time, um, I've definitely improved my communication skills, my leadership skill skills, um, my teaching skills, listening skills, um, just one-on-one -on -one working with people in general. And that's a big part of any career, especially in, in leadership is, is working with people and um, connecting with people. So, um, that skill has certainly grown, but I think the thing that's kept me doing it the most is just, it feels really good to help people succeed and to see them succeed. I mean, it's like a bit addictive for me, I guess. Um, so I, I feel quite selfish when I do the mentorship because I get a lot out of it too, where I'm like, yeah, I want to see you like reach your goals and um, grow. It's just really rewarding for me. So I'm, I'm, I feel lucky to be able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. That, that, is honestly one of the greatest, I think, rewards, just watching someone that you're definitely helping and trying to figure out like, you know, what the next step should be, what what they should do, how they should approach their problems, and then watching them actually, you know, successfully solve those problems and get good results. That's always a gratifying thing. So thank you, Jared, for that. Um, over to you, James. Thanks, yeah, those are great answers. Um, I think in general, I just love helping people grow. Um, being a parent to kids or um, helping new employees on my team, you know, whatever it is, I've mentored interns in the past, um, you know, over like the summers or whatever their short timelines are. Um, and I'm always talking to friends about, you know, their career journeys and the different ways um, and decisions and goals they have. So um, I think I got into mentoring officially when um, during the COVID pandemic, there was a lot of designers getting laid off and, when these companies were freaking out and you know, sort of wondering, you know, if they can, if their business was going to continue. And so there was a surge at that point. And so some of the um, leaders in our design org set up a little program where we 
you know, posted something on LinkedIn, said, sign up here if you want to be mentored by, you know, our design community inside the company. And it was our first public like outreach thing like that, that really, and it was pretty amazing. I just, I love talking to folks. It just introduced the whole idea of, you know, I can share what I know, even if I don't feel like an expert um, and really benefit them. And then, so that set me up, I think later, like last year when I discovered ADP list. And so I jumped right in um, and started doing the same thing. It's just putting yourself out there um, and starting talking to people that are interested. Um, and I think it's, it's really interesting. Like to, like I said, those different paths that people come in. Um, I came in from industrial design, you know, other people come from unrelated design careers. Like it's just pretty, pretty interesting to learn and meet other people. Um, and see where they want to go and see if I can contribute to that. You know, even if I just provide a little bit of extra value, you know, or give them some fresh perspective, like I was talking to someone the other day and just saying, you know, your, your experience is great. And just giving them a confidence boost was really meaningful. Um, and they needed to hear that, you know, at the moment it's tough when they're in the middle of, of, of um, you know, trying to grow. So it's just those little things I think make it so valuable and so rewarding. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's such an amazing thing that you were able to, alongside the other designers at your organization, you know, step in and actually provide that help and support that a lot of people would have needed in those periods, like during the pandemic, the heat of it, when people were, you know, mostly getting layoffs. Even now, it's still a thing that we're seeing across the tech industry. So having a place to go where you can actually have a conversation with, you know, people who have experience, have experienced multiple things in their careers and can tell you like, you'll be fine. You know, it's a rough patch. It's not a rough life. Sometimes that's all people just really need to hear. So that's a great one. Um, and finally, again, last but not the least, Jason, I need to stop doing this. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Yeah. So I think I, I got into mentoring first when I was at a company, uh, a past company that I worked for started an internal UX mentorship program. And I was at this company for about five, uh, five and a half years. And the first couple of times I uh, wanted to have a mentor. And as time went on, I had a mentor, but I also started mentoring somebody. And when I've had, been at companies that don't have that, I feel like there's a gap in my life that I need to be giving back. And if I'm not going to be giving back internally into the company, then I definitely want to find people in the U.S. community that I can mentor and help them grow. Uh, like Jared said, it's also a bit selfish that I love hearing success stories about when I've given advice on portfolio or interviewing skills and then I hear I got the job that just fills me with so much like it, it gives me more fuel to keep going and, and continue doing this uh so uh i've been doing this on adp list for like i said a couple of years and i don't ever see stopping amazing thank you jason um and yeah everybody has raised a lot of really really great points here i think when you even expand to the wider community of mentors on ADP list, you find that there's lots of similarities in the answers as to why people are starting to, you know, be mentors um, across, you know, ADP list or other platforms, or even just not even in a structured way, you know, just being able to lend a helping hand to people who will reach out to you on LinkedIn or on, you know, wherever. Um, but yeah, more specifically, I mean, just from these intros and this question that you've all answered, we can see that there's been lots of different benefits for mentorship, even in your own personal lives and careers. But more specifically to the topic for today and why we're here, I would love to hear some ways that you think that mentorship has improved your leadership skills, if at all. I think that this is a really interesting discourse just because, again, there's lots of benefits to mentorship for the mentee and the mentor as well. But as it relates to leadership specifically, and seeing as you know, we have people with diverse lens of mentorship experience here in this panel, would love to learn if, you know, if you feel like mentorship specifically ha has connected to your leadership skills in any way, if there are any benefits that you can see that you've seen that has helped you just be a better leader in your organizations. And for this one, I will be starting with you, Jason. <laughs> All right, I'm not, I'm not last this time. So I definitely want to call out a couple of ways that mentoring has helped with my leadership skills. The first is through storytelling. And I feel 
as you grow in an organization and as you take on more and more responsibilities, you need to be able to weave a really cohesive and poignant story to leadership on why you've created a design or why you believe uh, a design should be design A versus design B. Uh, as I've reviewed a lot of portfolios and heard mentees talk through their stories, it's helped me craft compelling stories uh, that I can use uh, when, when I'm giving talks within the company. Uh, another thing that I want to call out is confidence and speaking ability. So I've been called out in the past before I started mentoring that uh, I would be very timid uh, when, when presenting or kind of almost using upward inflections. Like, I think we can do this design. Uh, almost not being confident of myself. And I don't think any mentee wants to hear, uh, I think that's good. Like we need to uh, bring confidence uh, and ensure that our mentees like, yes, this is the direction you need to be heading. So using that form of speech and the way I'm talking to mentees, I've been able to also bring that into my own work and present a lot more with confidence and uh it's only gotten better. Absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. And I mean, practice makes perfect here. Yeah? So you, you need to practice what you want to get better at. And it's just incredible to see that, of course, there are benefits, direct benefits that you can attribute to mentoring people. So helping people has helped you. And that's, that's you know, just amazing, really. Okay, lovely. Next is Rose. I want to hear from you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think for me, it, it's communication has been benefited by by speaking to people with a diverse set of experiences, um, people with diverse backgrounds, people who don't necessarily know the tech lingo. Um, I think that any of us who work in the tech field know that it has a language of its own and being able to translate that even out of research terms into more common language has been really helpful for me when communicating with my stakeholders. Um, as And I've practiced that a lot in, in mentoring and, and trying to translate insights or what I do into language. I mean, much much like you said, Jason, the, the storytelling aspect has been really helpful in that regard. Um, I think another thing is imposter syndrome and being able to work with someone and seeing them succeed through the advice that I have given or the suggestions I have made or even just letting them figure out their own path through pointing out where maybe their blind spots are or what they haven't thought about has helped me feel better about my own work and made me more confident um, to the point where I knew Having mentored for a couple of years, I knew that the next step in my career was management, um, which, you know, I'm I'm fairly young for a manager. Um, but even even that I feel confident in saying I'm a good manager and going back to that imposter syndrome and, and maybe a year or two ago, I, I could not have said that way. I would not have felt confident enough to say, yes, I'm going to put my hat in the ring for this promotion, for this position. And I feel that I can do it and feel confident that I have helped other people succeed in their careers, which is the role of a manager. Um, and then also the final thing is, is having less of an ego. Again, the role of a manager is to uplift your team and uplift the people around you. And, and in UX too, you're, you are not the person who's asking for this change. The users are asking for this change. So you have to be able to say, I don't like it. It may not be my decision, but I have to remove myself from this equation. I have to take my ego out of this. And mentoring is really helpful for that as well um, and, and helping you put the other person first. Um, so I think all of those have been great to practice while, while mentoring um, with, that, with that diverse audience. Yeah, absolutely. And Rose, honestly, I think one thing that you mentioned that I can personally relate to is really just mentorship, really helping with imposter syndrome and helping you boost your own ego and boost your confidence and looking at you know the work that you're able to do it's it's one i definitely can relate with in my career as well 
I consider myself young for a lot of the things, a lot of positions that I've held and being able to talk about my experience with mentors, help them solve problems, see them advancing little by little in their own careers as well, just reinforces the fact that, you know, I'm onto something and I'm not a fraud, <laughs> you know, even though I know I'm not a fraud, but that validation is you have to admit that it's something that, you know, you're getting from also that too. So, that's that's really amazing and very relatable. Thank you for sharing that. And over to you, James. I'd love to hear from you next. Yeah, man, it's tough to follow. Those are those are great answers. Um, I think something that I wanted to share, sort of, on because leadership is such a big topic, and there's so many little aspects that we've already covered. But um, some way I, I thought I've been thinking about it recently was sort of like thinking back to when there was, you know, skill based trades where, you know, you want to learn something like be a carpenter, or, you know, something that's hands on and takes a lot of time to learn. Like there was this pro traditional process of, you know, you have an apprenticeship and you have the, per the teacher mentor above you. And so um, our tech industry is sort of missing that. And so I think I've been thinking about how uh, mentoring sort of can help you know, replace that or evolve that idea. But it, th that model of like, there's an apprenticeship and it's over long term, you know, might adjust. ADP might be one time and done, or it might be six months, whatever the time frame is. But if you add those up, I think over your career, you know, the, in, the specific moments you have of mentorship, you know, it can turn into like a longer um, growth period. And so I was thinking about that. Um, and so because I've had those people in my, like others have said on this panel, and I've had those people in my career before that have helped me through different stages. And if, and if it was, if I think of it as like this um, more long-term program, then I can sort of adjust and learn. And so both sides are learning. It's not just the mentee learning, it's the mentor learning, just like we've been talking about. Um, so that's sort of how I've been thinking about it. And then, um, so, thinking about the leadership thing again, then I started to focus on like, what skills is that, is that producing? And so um, you have to be great at listening. You know, you have to be able to hear what people are saying, um, not talk over them, you know, understand their perspective and think about, you know, what they're, where they're coming from, what their mind and perspective is, is like before you start giving input. Um, and so that's, I think that's really valuable just in all types of situations. Another one is sort of thinking of quick feedback. Again, like my default has sort of been in the past, my personality is like quieter and I'll, I'll wait and think and come back to you in a couple of hours and be, oh, I thought of what I wanted to say. But this, like just through the, through the careers um, growth and mentoring specifically, it's really helped me like speed that up and say, okay, I, I have a half formed thought, but I'm going to say it and sort of evolve it as I, as I speak, um, because that's, that's really important to be able to do, you know, as you're going again, you know, it can, it can go to that imposter syndrome, but you know, we all have things we can give input on. Um, and it's important to learn how to like articulate those and get those out of your head. Um, another one is sort of um, guiding people. And you know, we've talked about this sort of, instead of directing them, um, you know, I can sort of see, examples of good managers that can sort of give you some advice and without giving you directions. Like you, you go to them and say, what do I do? And they don't tell you what to do, but instead they inspired you to figure it out yourself. And so I think that's what mentors can do too. They can sort of say, well, I did this and this is how I got success, quote unquote, successful in my career. Instead of saying that you can say, well, what do you want to do? You know, what is, what advantages or directions could you go? And so we're sort of inspiring them to figure it out on their own and sort of self-direct instead of, you know, dictating what they should do or what worked for us. I think that's like really important in leadership skills in general, you know, the situations are going to change. It's not always going to be, you can't always go back to your previous experience and say, Oh, in this one situation, I did this. So therefore we should do this again. The situation changes. So, you know, how can you inspire the people and the team um, to, to make a new decision based on the current events? Um, so I think that's important one, you know, and then, the other thing I was thinking was you need to adjust your guidance as people and the situations evolve over time. So you might talk to a mentee at the early stage and this, you have some guidance, you know, about them, you know, maybe they need to improve one aspect of their skills, but then you meet them again later and you have to evolve that and say, you don't just give them the same advice twice. You know, you've got to evolve that and see what their journey is and how things evolve. So again, it's like this leadership skill of adapting and, 
um, being able to look at a situation with fresh eyes and not just repeat the same thing, um, sort of evolve it over time as things as things change. So those are all sort of in my head about like those valuable things about that I can use in leading teams, you know, managing folks if I get to that point. And um, even just like getting consensus on a project, like if we're working with, you're always working with other people. And so to get that consensus and get a direction for your project, all these leadership skills can apply. Anyway, <laughs> that's a lot, but it's been fun no, to think about. It's incredible. Thank you. And I feel like I resonated and I can imagine that the rest of the panel as well resonate a lot with a lot of things that you said, um, particularly, you know, talking about being able to give quick feedback, thinking on your feet. That's that's something that I would imagine that you know a lot of us have experienced and have probably gotten better at by, you know, consistently helping people solve problems. There's also, I think, the bit about, you know, being exposed to a lot of, like, diverse problems. That's one that I would definitely say I've experienced um, because, you know, you talk to different people, lots of different random issues. You know, somebody is trying to figure out how to solve this very specific niche problem in this industry that you never, you know, you don't have any experience in and you're thinking of like out of the box ways to help them solve that problem. And that just helps you get better also. And you even get informed, you know, because now you know something about that thing that just is not really something you get to interact with all the time. And I think maybe it might not be the exact same case for design, but as a marketing mentor, it's something that I've experienced quite a bit. So I think that, you know, those are all really awesome answers. And I'm just going to pass the mic to Jared. Over to you, last but definitely not the least. Want to hear about how and if mentorship has improved your leadership skills in any way? Yeah, I think it has. I think uh, two big categories for me in terms of improving leadership skills. One is listening skills. And then the second is teaching skills. So I'll, I'll dive into each of those. I think listening is super, super powerful and an underrated skill not just something that you do it's something that you can develop and get better at i know i've certainly gotten a whole lot better at it i'm still not perfect but but i've certainly gotten better and i think it's powerful for a couple different reasons as a leader and also as a mentor um listening alone can help people through their problems sometimes they just need somebody to listen <laughs> and on an emotional level but also um when they talk through their situation they'll come to realizations on their own often. And even if they don't come to those realizations on their own, part of your job as a leader and as a mentor is to understand their problem deeply enough to offer advice or suggestions or guidance. And uh, if we're too quick to just throw the suggestions and guidance their way, we're very likely to be solving the wrong problem. We're not the root of the problem for that person. And so we you know, worst case, we we solve the wrong problem that's not really all that important. Um, or we miss the potential of solving a much deeper problem that could have a, a much bigger impact on their career or on their situation. I think listening is super powerful and it's a skill that takes conscious effort to improve. Um, and I always get the opportunity to improve that skill as a mentor. And um, I really appreciate that. And then the second skill that I think uh, mentorship has helped me is um, teaching and um, a big part of being a leader is, is teaching the folks on your team you're supposed to be further along in your career and um, be setting the bar for, for what we're trying to, to do as a team um, and so when you teach uh, it forces you to have to know what you're teaching super super well like you look pretty dumb if you're trying to explain something that you don't understand well so you've got to go and do the homework and really understand that thing. And um, I always need extra motivation. <laughs> and so I appreciate the extra motivation to go and get better at this thing that I'm going to go and teach and really level it up. And then once you know it well, you've got to figure out how to communicate that. And so you're building your communication skills as well, which, I mean, communication skills are valuable everywhere in life. Um, there's not a place where communication isn't valuable. So figuring out um, how to say something efficiently, how to say something in a way that the other person is gonna receive and understand. Um, being very individual is something that I get to do a lot as a mentor. Every, every single person I meet is like different situation, unique unique communication style. And so I'm, I'm always like trying to do that dance with the individual, find the rhythm together. 
Yeah, absolutely. And those are great answers. Um, I think something that you said that really resonated with me is sometimes people just need people to listen um, and just need like, you know, an impartial ear really to come in and just listen to the problem and give a very out of the box approach. Sometimes you don't even need to give something completely revolutionary. They just want you to either validate what they're already thinking or like Jared said, really just listen. <laughs> so that that is, it's really great. Um, and the next question that I had, I think I'm actually going to start with you on this one, Jared. Um, so, I mean, we've explored lots of different ways that, you know, leadership, uh, mentoring has improved leadership skills for us as mentors, but beyond leadership, are there any other benefits that you think that you've seen to mentorship as it relates to career growth for both mentors and mentees? Because now the conversation has really been focused on you know us as mentors and how mentorship has helped improve our leadership skills, and that's great. But for mentees as well, is there an angle where mentorship would be? improving their leadership skills or beyond leadership, you know, helping to improve their career growth in any way, Jared, would you say? Yeah, certainly. Yeah. If you're not, um, yet ready to start mentoring people, I, first, my first thought is like, you should probably start sooner than you think, if that's the way you're thinking, um, you, you most certainly have knowledge and wisdom and experience to share with other folks. Um, so if you're, if you're saying that to yourself, you, you, you should probably just start sooner. Um, but, you know, maybe you're not ready. And um, if you're not ready, you can certainly still develop your leadership skills. Like being a leader doesn't mean that you have a leadership title or that you have reports. It means um, bringing people together and producing positive change. And that's a really valuable skill, no matter what your position is at a company or where you are um, on your career. And you can always get better at that. I mean, there's certainly people in uh, formal positions of leadership that have, you know, uh, more or less leadership skills. And there's people that are not in a position of formal leadership that have very strong leadership skills. And um, those skills will serve you in your career no matter what, what your career goals are. And I, I would say you can build those skills uh, with your mentor. A lot of the, the mentee requests that I get are about interviewing, maybe like 60, 70% are about how to land the job. But I do get those 30% who are really thinking about how do I perform in the job? How do I get promoted is the big entry point, but it's really about performing at your best, um, producing the biggest impact in your career. And very often the answer there isn't take this class. It's improving communication skills, improving uh, listening skills, improving relationships, um, improving presentation skills. And these are all leadership, I would say leadership skills. Um, these are interpersonal skills about bringing people together and producing positive change. And uh, as a designer, you'll reach a point in your career where this is a requirement. Most companies moving from like product designer to senior product designer, you're expected to have an impact outside of your feature team and start be improving the, the overall design team. And so this is again, leadership skills, um, not just design skills. So you can get that um, knowledge and that insight and you can develop those skills with the help of a, of a mentor. Absolutely. Thank you, Jared. And I mean, lots of gems, honestly, if I do say so myself, have been dropped in this session today. I'm really glad to have been, you know, part of this. Um, I'm aware of time, so I'm going to move us to questions really quickly because we have a buzzing audience with tons of really great questions. So I think we should set aside some time to answer some of them. Um, I'm going to start with the first question here, which is how can we pick mentors that align with our views? So is the best practice to schedule with a bunch of different mentors until you connect one? Um, I think this is a really interesting question. Who would like to tackle this one? Any takers? I can, I can answer this. Um, I see that there were a couple comments um, in here from from Jared as well, but just to to go off of that, I think the really great thing about ADP List is that there's millions of mentors all over the world, right at your fingertips, which is an amazing opportunity that you shouldn't sh like narrow your focus so soon. Um, so I guess to answer the question directly, I would say kind of figure out what you want, do a little soul searching, a little 
self-reflection. What am I trying to get out of this? And it may be that you have a couple of things and a couple of different mentors may answer those different needs for you. Um, so you certainly don't have to um, stick to one the whole time. You can jump around. You can, much like a therapist, if anyone's been in therapy, you find your therapist after trying a couple different ones. And then sometimes they, they can't help you anymore and you need to move on to another one. Um, and hopefully you have a good enough relationship that your mentor is, uh, is okay with you finding someone new at that point in your career or your development. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to schedule as much time as you've got, try and, try and learn something from as many people as possible while we have this resource. Yeah, absolutely. And in, it really doesn't hurt because everyone, you know, brings a unique perspective. It might not necessarily work for you, but you would most likely be learning something or gaining some sort of value or at least identifying, you know, what you don't want, I guess. So, yeah, great advice there. Thank you, Rose. Um, the next question here, I can see that we already have some questions being answered in the comments. So I'm going to skip those ones. Um, this is an unanswered question from Lucia. Lucia, I'm, apologies if I mispronounced that, but the question is what happens when mentoring is based on helping to improve skills so that the person achieves goals in an organization? That is when success does not depend only on the mentee. I think this is an interesting one um, because a lot of the time, I mean, we work in organizations where, you know, there's lots of collaboration, there's lots of teamwork. So how exactly would we, you know, make sure that we're succeeding even when success doesn't completely depend on you. So who's, is there anyone who would like to answer this one? I can nominate somebody. <laughs> I don't totally understand the question if I'm being honest. What happens when mentoring is based on helping to improve skills? That that's what I mean, generally, that's what all mentorship is based on, and at least initially, is trying to improve a skill. I'm not sure uh, I understand yeah. the question. I think my understanding is really what happens when your mentorship is, hmm, that's a good, <laughs> now I'm thinking about it again, and I'm like, I'm not actually quite sure if I'm clear. When I read it, what I understood was what happens when, you know, I'm being mentored and I'm gaining a set of skills. Um to help me reach a specific goal that is not dependent on just me. So maybe like it's something that has to do with like everyone else in the team. But I guess maybe we can move on to the next one if it's not very clear. Um, and we can take some time to answer that one in the comments or ask the um, person who asked the question for more clarification. Um, since we're moving on time. Okay, so there's another question here. When is it all right to start mentoring? That is at what point in our career as a designer? I think this one is quite an interesting one. Um, I can, I feel like I can answer it, but I'm just going to allow the actual designers to answer it. <laughs> Anyone? I, yeah, I have a thought on this. The, um, I think there's like a perception that, you know, you'll reach a point and then you'll know, you'll become an expert and now you're ready to mentor. But I think Jared said earlier, like, we've all got things to share. There isn't like, you're not going to flip a switch and be, you know, Oh, today I'm a mentor. <laughs> it's just like once you gain, you know, any level of experience um, in your role, you've got something you can share with others, and um, that's that's the moment. It's just like realizing: Are you willing to share what you've done in the past, good or bad? You know, and the lessons you've learned from it. It's all about you know sharing what you've learned and seeing how it helps others. It doesn't have to be you have the perfect answer. You know, you're this highly regarded expert. I think that's what's good about the flexibility of ADP. You know, it just, it's open. You can pick people, you can meet different types of people. They're going to be at different stages. Anyway, I, th I think that's pretty, people get sort of that block in their head that I'm not ready, but maybe you are right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think just to also conclude on that one, there's definitely lots of different people with at different stages in their careers. And I think that the mentorship that you need also varies depending on where you are in your career. So think of it as a journey and not, you know, a one and done type of situation. And that may be, that may help, I guess. Um, we had quite a lot of questions relating to that one, you know, start when to start mentor, mentoring, how do you know you're ready? So I really hope that that answer from James here really helped to clarify that one. And we are coming up on time. We have just one minute left. Um, so 
Again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, I think that this has been a really productive and interesting discourse. I'm really glad to have been a part of this. Are there any closing notes from any from everyone? Um, I think we can just take like 10 seconds, you know, give us that one last bit, what you want everyone to take away and keep ringing in their ears as they disconnect from the session today. Danger. I would just say, to add, okay. oh, to add on to James, if, if you don't think you're ready to start mentoring, you're, you're ready to start mentoring. Uh, there is nothing that's going to, a light that's going to go off saying, oh, I'm ready. You're ready to give back to the community and increase your own leadership skills. Amazing. Absolutely agree with that. Um, and it's, it's not too early to start um, and look for local chapters of UXPA or um, Hexagon, or there's lots of places you can find a community um, to, to help out. Okay, um, Jared, James, any last words? <laughs> Uh, just thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, thank you for um, listening and participating in this conversation. And uh, I agree with what's already been shared. Um, you have something valuable to share. Um, someone can benefit from it if you're willing to share it. And you'll feel really good about it, too. Take advantage of the free resources on ADP list. Um, it's a really, really powerful thing. Um, I don't know that many people realize how powerful it is to have so many knowledgeable, experienced, and kind uh, mentors at, at their fingertips. Awesome. Well, we're actually at one minute over time, so I'm just going to wrap you up your hair, unless, James, there's one burning thing that you have to say. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Anything? No? I would just say, yeah, just relax. Like, it's a low-pressure situation. You don't have to worry, you know, and stress out over these. Just connect with the human and talk to them. See what happens. You'll be surprised. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And thank you to the panel. This has been great. Thanks a lot. And bye. Thank you all. <laughs>